everybody, welcome to the Creation Kit Scripting Series Papyrus Tutorials. This is the Events and Functions uh, section 13th, uh, 13th part of that section, excuse me. And we're moving away from recursion, if you notice, and we're going to start talking about arrays. Now they're not events or functions per se, but there are concepts for events and functions. More so on the events side of things that will be useful. Uh, to know what arrays are. So let's get started. What is an array? It is a container that holds a collection of like items. Uh, so in this generic example on the right, uh, notice how it's structured. It's kind of like a grid or a row uh, with little boxes. That's the internal representation of it and each box has something in it. So that's an array of size 10 Notice it starts from 0, not from 1, and goes to 9 instead of being 1 to 10. Um, in Papyrus, uh, arrays can only hold 128 items, so you have indexes 0 through 127 potentially available. It depends on how you declare an array, which we'll cover in another episode. We're just going to do some of the basic conceptual work and slow down from the recursive uh, segments we've been doing. Um, so, what can an array store exactly? Well, it can store the primary types, uh, your integers, your floats, your string, and your boolean. Uh, you can also store objects uh, such as forms, actors, object references, spells, books, uh, just anything that is a script object it can store in there including the SKSE extensions. Um, the only thing an array cannot store is another collection, so you can't have an index 1 an array within that. It has to be a value that's either uh, int, float, string, boolean, or an object. And you can't have a true multi-dimensional array um, in some programming languages, you uh, have multiple uh, calls, like let's say your array name and then brackets zero, that would be first index at the first level. And then in multi-dimensional arrays, you would have another bracket and number to say, oh, I want this column here, and so on and so forth. But you can't do this in Papyrus, so don't worry about multidimensional. We will look at some examples where we're faking multidimensional arrays, uh, since it is important. Uh, let's talk about why arrays are important, or why you would use them, rather. Um, keep track of like items, just simple, uh, oh hey, I want to keep track of this integer and see how it changes over time. Or, or oh hey, I want to make sure these values are correct. Um, you can simulate, simulate grids or game boards. So, uh, the guess your number, guess the number example, we could have done that with an array just to have those values and then it would randomly pick three of them. Eh, uh, I, we might recode it to where we can show that example. I'm not sure yet. Um, definitely going to look at some other examples such as tic-tac-toe, checkers we can probably do, albeit it'll probably be a really late episode. And some really cool things like that. Um, and then it can aid in large calculation functions uh, such as, you probably hate me for talking about this, but Fibonacci, yes, you can use an array to keep track of the previous results. Um, there's so many possibilities with arrays, they're very useful when you're dealing with lots of different uh, data types and you just, you don't want to flood the system with properties. That's one of the big uh, pluses to arrays. And uh, sorry, again, we're not going to do any testing. This is just a brief, oh hey, we're switching gears some of the basics of arrays. Um, in the next episode we're going to talk about uh, 
how to declare arrays and how to retrieve stuff from the arrays and put stuff into the arrays. So if you have any questions over the introduction to arrays, feel free to contact me uh, either on the Nexus or YouTube. Uh, if you have questions about the past uh, content, uh, future content, or uh, scripting questions in general, uh, feel free to message me as well. And I will see everybody on the next episode.